minister a dishonored believer why many believers are dishonored and I wanted to listen to what God is speaking to us the reason why I bring these teachings not me is the Holy Spirit is because this is in case you don't know you're not in a normal church I beg you this is not a normal church at all you're not watching a normal pastor at all there is nothing normal about us we are men on a mission. Amen. It's a church on a mission. The mission is win souls, make disciples, raise leaders. So we don't preach just to preach. We bring the heart of God to the lives of God's people. And God said, if I remain faithful in that, he will keep blessing us every single time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today, as I bring this teaching, I want you to be very attentive receive it very personally because it's the teachings of God's word it is the teaching of God's word that transforms people it's not the shouting of a preacher amen Matthew 5 verse 13 to 15 Matthew 5 verse 13 to 15 I want us to read together in unison let's do it one to go you, you are, are the salt, salt of the earth, earth but, but if, if the, the salt loses its flavor how, how shall it be seasoned it is, is then good, good for nothing, nothing but, but to be thrown out and trampled under foot by men. You are the, are the light of the world. world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Please, Lord, speak to us, Lord. Let your right hand rest upon us powerfully today. In Jesus name amen please be seated thank you all for coming may God speak to you and bless you in Jesus name this teaching or the Matthew 5 13 to 15 I'm picking a portion of the teachings of Jesus that we call the sermon on the mountain the sermon of the mountain now the sermon of the mountain was the revelation or is the revelation of the will of God regarding the standards of living for every believer. The standards of living for every believer. I have picked from verse 13 to 15 and Jesus Christ brought three important truths about the standard and the calling of a believer or a disciple of Jesus Christ. You see, number one, you're the salt of of the earth somebody say i am the salt of the earth place your right hand on the chest and say i am the salt of the earth then he said you're the light of the world somebody say i am the light of the world then he said you're a city that is set on a hill and it cannot be hidden i'm gonna be doing the same teachings this week as we pray during daily encounters in jesus name now you're a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden now i want to discuss the three uh truths and the three callings uh, uh by our lord jesus christ but i want to tackle them on reverse so i'll begin on your city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden so one more time place your hand on the chest and say i am a city that is set on a hill it cannot be hidden brothers and sisters we are cities that cannot be hidden that means the day you give your life to jesus christ you automatically become a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden what is the meaning of that now there's so many meanings to it but i want to pick just a portion because we don't have time to discuss everything it means number one you cannot be hidden the moment you become a christian you receive the calling of being a christian then you receive a calling to become conspicuous to become conspicuous in other words your life will always be under the scrutiny of the people of the world you cannot be hidden 
people will scrutinize you people are going to ask questions people are going to always question your true christianity is he a true christian does he really do what he confesses to do our life will be analyzed our aspect of life every aspect of life our family life our business life our career life our conduct our testimonies they'll be scrutinized by the world because we are a city that cannot be hidden somebody say amen when you become a christian brothers and sisters you become the focus of all eyes you are uh, everybody will have an opinion concerning you and you can't say it is my life it is no longer your life you are a city that cannot be hidden people will question why you're behaving the way you're behaving because why because they associate you to christianity and christianity is a life of being a city that cannot be hidden can i hear somebody say amen is there anybody that has ever been challenged by non-believers because of doing something wrong and they're asking you even you can you do that even you have you ever been asked like that i have been asked yeah even you you can say that even you you can say that why don't, don't complain about don't feel bad about it it is our life we are caught into a life of being conspicuous the day you said i love jesus christ then god lifted you up and he allowed the world to have an opinion concerning your life somebody say amen first peter 3 and verse 15 first peter 3 and verse 15 the bible says always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear so when you become a christian you attract public scrutiny and you become somebody of public interest i'm not surprised by the the hula baloo that is all over because of shakahola issue and all those kind of which is not even about the church the truth will come out one day there's a lot of wickedness happening there but the devil wants to brush it on the church and and whatever maybe there's part of the church but there's a lot of other wickedness happening there and the truth will come out because you can't hide the truth forever but nonetheless what am i saying i'm not surprised when a pastor does something small and there's a hula baloo around it you know yet everybody's doing all manner of wickedness and nobody's bothered with them we are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden can i hear somebody say amen we are a city that is set on a hill our life is under scrutiny our life is on the public interest people in your company will question you people at home will question you if you bear the testimony of jesus christ you are on the open and people will scrutinize your life somebody say amen, amen. that's number one say one more time i'm a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden that's why please don't hide your christianity god doesn't want you to hide your christianity let everybody know that you're born again you are saved don't be ashamed of christianity you are saved you cannot be hidden christianity is not something you hide nobody knows that you're born again you're just known to be born again. you know one day and i've given you this story before i went for a barrio uh, one of the sisters was there and 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 uh i think somebody said you know this is the pastor so and so and all the colleagues at work says even you know i'm pastor i thought you know i'm pastor and i could tell she was very ashamed because i think the testimony at work is she's not born again she says she drinks and all manner of things and everybody knows her to be you know a party animal and all that but in church we know her as a good sister don't be like that Christianity is not something to hide. Christianity is us being a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Somebody say, I'm not ashamed to be born again. Can I hear somebody say, Amen? I preach on the street because I'm not ashamed. I tell everybody I'm born again because I'm not ashamed. Hear me, Christianity is being a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Number two, we are the light of the world. The second thing that Jesus said is that you and I, as believers, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are the light of the world. Now, I want you to understand, the Bible does not say that you are a light of the world. It says you are the light. The light. The light. The meaning of that, brothers and sisters, the fact that there is a there, it means 
that we are the only available light in the world. You and I are the only available light in the world. You know when I teach this, you're going to take your Christianity seriously. It's not a small thing. It's a big thing. The calling just to be a Christian, a disciple of Jesus Christ, it's a major thing. You are the light of the world. Somebody say amen. Now, it means that we have no other available light anywhere. We are the only available light. John chapter 9 and verse 5. John chapter 9 and verse 5. The Bible says, as long as I am in the world, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I, Jesus, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. But hear me. Now, let me explain something. You need light at night to know where to step and which way to go, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, when it's dark, you need light so that you can know this is the way that I, I, I should go. What Jesus was saying, he was saying, I am the way things should be done. Okay? He was saying, as long as I'm in the earth, I show the way of doing things. Yeah. In other words, if you want to know how to do anything, I, Jesus, I am the way. I show you the way of doing things. But today, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is not currently in the world. Mm. He left. But before he left, he handed over that assignment to you and me. Am I communicating? John 20 verse 21. John 20 verse 21. The Bible says, So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, as the Father has given me this assignment, so do I also send you. I also send you. You are saying, my Father gave me an assignment to be the way. At one point in the book of John 14 verse 6, he says, I'm the way, the truth and the life. He says, I'm the way things should be done. I'm the way things should be done. My life is a demonstration of how things should be done. Then he said, I'm exiting. So I'm handing over that assignment to you. So you and I will receive the assignment to be the light of the world. To be the way things should be done. Am I communicating? Aha. Uh -huh. So what do I mean? I mean you and I, we are the models in the world. We are the only available models in the world. There is no other model. It means how we carry ourselves is the way the world should carry itself. Through our lifestyle, we demonstrate how life should be done. Mm. No wonder Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, imitate me, imitate me. He understood I am the light, I am the way, imitate me. Every believer should come to a place where they tell everybody around, imitate me. Imitate, I am the way, I am the light of the world. Am I communicating? <laughs> In other words, we are supposed to show the world how good marriage look like. We are supposed to show the world how to dress. We are supposed to show the world how to talk. We're supposed to show the world how to love one another. We're supposed to show the world how to honor God. You're supposed to show the world how to honor parents. You're supposed to show the world how to submit to our husbands. It's supposed to be our lives is a demonstration. This is how things should be done. We are the light of the world. Am I communicating today? I'm working hard here. We're supposed to show the world how to walk in humility. We're supposed to show the world how to love our wives. People are supposed to just look at your life and follow you and find out how to do things. That is the standard God has given us. Am I communicating? We're supposed to show the world how to work hard. If everybody has your work ethic, 
are we going to be third world or sixth world or first world? <laughs> Supposed to demonstrate to the world. Yani just stand in my life, copy. That's it. And then he said, copy me as I copy Jesus. The real way. <laughs> yeah. Am I communicating? Yeah. Because we're supposed to be so subjected to Jesus and then we display him. Amen? You're supposed to show the world. Lady, you're supposed to show the world how to submit to your man. Yeah. Your hard-headedness is a misappropriation of life. It's a misrepresentation of life. You are giving that man so much headache. If we, all the ladies copy you, all the men here will be crying daily. It's getting quiet today. I don't know. <laughs> when you slap your woman, bah! you are trying to tell all of us to beat our wives because you are the light of the world. That's all you're trying to tell us. Then we're going to destroy all the ladies in the world. Yeah. So the call of Christianity is called to be a model. <laughs> At one point, Paul said, you are, I am a we are living epistles. In other words, don't read the Bible. Read our lives. Don't read, we, are the, we, are the re we are the real Bible. <laughs> the people of the world will never read the Bible. They are going to read your life. God wanted it to be like that. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? So it's a pity when you allow the world to teach you how to dress. Now the world is the light of you. I'm anointed this morning. The world has become your light instead of you becoming the light of the world. Now you're copying the world. When you copy the trends of the world, it's a, it's a reversal of the Bible. Now the one who's supposed to be followed is following. Wow. One more time, say, I'm the light of the world. Say one more time, I am the light of the world. Let me, let's learn something from the tabernacle. And please, when I mention the word tabernacle, please don't switch off because some people say tabernacle is too difficult. Let's let's only let's stay in other other areas. But it's not difficult. Let me show you something. The tabernacle of Moses had three pieces of furniture. Okay, there it is. All right. Can you all see it? Are you able to say it? All right. It had an outer court. No, not outer court. They thought it had an, a holy place. It had two portions. The inner area had two portions. The holy place and then the holy of holies. Are we together? Now, as you can see on the left side, there is what we call the seven candlesticks. Golden. Seven golden candlesticks. They were like that, just like candle. You know? They represent the church of Jesus Christ. In fact, that's why we have the seven letters. Seven letters to the church is the book of Revelation. To, the, to Asia Minor, which is my message to the pastors and to the churches all over the world. The seven letters in the book of Revelation. Now, now it is represented because there are seven uh, golden candlesticks. Now, that is on the left side. Let me have my gentlemen for demonstration. Can you come? The three gentlemen. Oh, one was, okay, one is not right, okay. So, you are the candlestick. So, assuming this is how from here, this is the holy place. Then from here, from this pulpit is the most holy place. It had two portions. Number one is the holy place. Somebody see the holy place. And the second portion is the holy of holies. Somebody see the holy of holies. So in the holy place, we had the seven candlesticks, golden candlesticks. Then we had the table of shoe bread. The table of shoe bread. Okay. Aha, that is a table with a bread on top. That's all. It's as simple as that. Okay. Sit there. Stand here. Stand behind here. Stand behind here. Then here we have the altar of incense. The altar of incense was just in something like a stool, which designed in style. 
and then it had a bowl that had incense going up. That is the altar of incense. They had the four horns, golden, and all that beautiful things. Maybe, maybe we'll study that if God allows. Uh, so the altar of incense, this is the holy place, the tabernacle of Moses. This is the altar of incense that represents prayer. Somebody say prayer. You can't become a great believer without prayer. The incense is prayer. And the incense was supposed to be there throughout. That's what the Bible says, Luke chapter 18, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. This table of shoe bread, Jesus is the bread of life. It represents Jesus Christ. It represents the word of God. Somebody say amen. Now this is Jesus Christ, the bread. And this is now the seven candlesticks. Is the church or the believer. Are we now in agreement? This is who? The church. This is who? Jesus. This is who? Prayer. Or the altar of incense. The seven candlesticks. And then the table of shield bread. Now, here, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the candlesticks, they used to put oil in it. After putting oil, then light it, put it on fire. Am I communicating? The fire would provide the light for the entire tabernacle. If the fire is not lightened up, the entire tabernacle is dark. The, the candlestick was the only available source of light. And that is the reality of the believers. We are, we are the only available source of light in the entire world. If we are off, the entire world is in darkness. That's why the world does not like us, but they can't do anything about it. Even the days of martyrdom, they killed so many believers, but they were surprised. That's when the church grew the most. <laughs> That's when the church spread the most. Because the ch you can't do anything about the church. Hitler thought he can kill and destroy everybody. But today, he's dead, rotten, and forgotten. Amen. Because the church is the only available light. Somebody say, I'm the light of the world. But let me say, say something. The light was projected on the table of shield bread. Okay? In fact, the purpose of the light was to reveal the shield bread, which is Jesus Christ. You become the light of the world when you reveal Christ through your lifestyle. You and I, we are empty. We have nothing to offer. It is when now we show the lifestyle of Jesus and when people see you, they say, ah, you are so different. It is because you reveal the manner it seems, the character, the behavior, the thoughts, the heart of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul said, imitate me as I reveal him to you. Because <clears throat> imitate me as I imitate Christ. So I'm imitating Paul. Sorry. And you're imitating Christ. I'm imitating you, isn't it? You are Paul. And Christ is the one you are imitating. Who am I imitating in the wrong run? Talk back to me. People are supposed when they imitate you, they imitate Jesus Christ. <laughs> because the way you think, you think Jesus. You've eaten the word. You've patterned your life after the teachings of the word of God. The way you love. Hey. The way you care. Your purity. Hey. The way you forgive. You forgive so fast. Somebody says, now nah, I'll copy you. They are actually copying Christ because you're copying Christ. So we project the light. The light is to reveal Jesus Christ. But let me say this. When, you, when they used to put on this, because those uh, candlesticks, they were hollow. They would put oil in it and then light the fire. Then it would light it up. 
That oil is the Holy Spirit. That fire is the fire of the Holy Spirit. Until a believer has is subjected and being led by the Holy Spirit and carrying the fire of the Holy Spirit, there is no difference between him and any other furniture anywhere. The only way you can make a difference as a believer is when, you, when you're really subjected to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will tell you, don't do that. Don't do that. Am I, am I communicating? Yeah. I, I remember somebody said one day, somebody interjected them in, a, in, a, in, a, in town. And they were so angry. And they, all of them, they stopped the car. And he's a man of God. And he opened the car. He wanted to come out and box the guy. <laughs> you know but as he was walking out somebody told him what are you doing what is that it's the Holy Spirit the reason why some of us go all the way is because we are not subjected to the Holy Spirit so we are not able to project the light <laughs> yeah the oil is somebody carrying the oil you are about to do something and then the Holy Spirit tells you no don't do it can I hear somebody say amen I saw a man, somebody had written, you know, uh, had shown a funny face. At the face you have when you have written an entire message. And then the Holy Spirit causes you to delete the entire message and reply with okay. <laughs> because you are subjected to the oil. And then you have the fire. What is the fire? The fire is the passion. Hey! Passion for prayer. Passion for soul winning. Passion to demonstrate Christ in the marketplace. Passion to tell everybody about Jesus. Do you love Jesus Christ? Do you know him? He's a good friend. I can pray for you. I can introduce you to Jesus because you carry the fire. That is the only believer who can become the light of the world. Because those two components causes you to project Jesus Christ to your world. Somebody say, I'm the light of the world. Don't forget this. We are the model. I say we are the model. If there's any area in your life we cannot imitate, you need to upgrade that area. Because you are, you are, you are fading the model. Yeah. You're not the light in that area. Be it in your marriage. Be it in the way you love people. Be it in the way you forgive be it in your humility. There are people, if you don't give them front seats. Can I talk about nature now? If you don't give them front seats, they are going to bring issues. That lack of issue, you're not a light. If the Bible says when you come to a gathering, don't take the front seat. Have you not read the Bible? Take the back seat. So that but adventure they can pick you and bring you in front. And then you shall be honored. In other words, humble yourself. God will honor you. But the people were so proud. Hey, if you step on them by mistake, the thing that will come out is not God bless you. They will call you names. You are not a light in that area because your emotions are not subjected to the Holy Spirit. Why are you not talking as a couple? Even today, you're not in talking mood. It's because one of you is proud. Proud. The Bible says, contention, <laughs> contention is only there when there is pride. Everywhere you see contention, there is pride. Every time you see arguments, somebody among them is proud or two of them are proud. Amen? Amen? You see, if you're in a disagreement with my beloved, chance, most of the times, some, one of us is proud. And most probably it's her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, tell, I'll say that. It, no, I'm not malicious. I'm not malicious. I'm not malicious. I'll tell you why most of the times maybe it could be her. Because According to the hierarchy of heaven, I'm her leader. Yeah, I'm her leader. I'm her leader. And the Bible says, submit yourself to authority. 
Am I wrong? Ladies, don't hate me, please. I beg you. If you hate me, also your feelings are not subjected to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but also it could be me. Yeah. Pastor Grace, I'm going to say, yes! It's true. Because the Bible says, submit one to another. Or it could be both of us. Yeah. Everywhere you see contention. Let me tell you. You are having an argument with your mother. If your mother, mostly you, the daughter, you are the one who's proud. Yeah. And I know your mother could be proud. But it's easier for you based on your position to humble yourself and say, sorry, ma'am. Yeah. The one who's down is the, most, is the one who's more prouder. Do you know when the prodigal son left? Are you still here? Are you here? Oh, I've lost you in the other point. <laughs> you are in the tabernacle, eh? When the prodigal son left, do you know the father never went to go look for him? No, no, the father never went looking for him. He never went look. It was him who came back to his senses and came back to the father. When he came back to the father, the humility of the father was to receive the son. It was not to look for the son. Ah, you don't understand what I'm saying. The humility of the father is to receive the son. So sometimes our humility as parent is, is to forgive you when you say sorry. It is not to go begging you to say sorry. Cinema and Dico. Cinema and Dico. So every time there's an argument, find out who is the leader there. If you are the one below, you are the one God is giving more responsibility to humble yourself. Otherwise, pride will cause you to lose the job. Yeah. Write an, write an apology to your manager and retain your job, or for the next four months, you're going to struggle paying rent. Michelle will be Mimi. Can I hear somebody say Amen. No, one of my daughter came to my, my office the other day and they had a disagreement with her husband. It was bad. It was bad. And actually, after I listened to her, I knew the husband was in trouble. It was the one who was wrong. I knew the husband was wrong. You know what I told her? I told her, write a message. I said, my dear, if I made a mistake and I did something that never made you happy, I want to ask you, please, forgive me. And she wrote, I told her, write a message. She wrote, yeah, she wrote. The husband maybe is here and doesn't know I'm the one who. who, who. <laughs> I was the author of the message. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, write the message and give me a report how he replies. When he, she got home, the husband received her well and the issue was totally resolved. <laughs> totally resolved totally resolved. I'm only a pastor in this church because I've apologized to my bishop about things I can't understand. That's the reason why he has never kicked me out because there have been so many accusations that are stupid and funny that are not even true. But because I am a humble man, I would apologize because I realize wherever there is contention, there is pride. And I decided I will not be the proud one and God has preserved me. Oh yes. Oh yes. Am I communicating? Oh yes, I'm preaching good today. Yeah. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is we are the light. And we project Jesus Christ. And we have to carry the oil. Be submitted to the Holy Spirit. He's telling you something. You are fighting it. That's the only that is the only way. That's how you become the light. And then be passionate about him. And then he said, we are the salt. God bless you. Take your seat. Clap your hands for these wonderful ministers of the gospel. Did you catch that? Somebody say, I am a city. I am a city. Place it on your, on, your, on your chest. Say, I am a city. I, am a city. I, cannot I cannot be hidden. I am open to the scrutiny of the world. Number two, say, I am the light. I am the light. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we are the standard. We are the what? 
Be careful what you send on Facebook. Ask yourself if all of us send like you. Ask yourself. Always see yourself as the standard because God sees you as the standard. You are the light. Yeah. Be careful how you talk to the Makanga. Forget the Makatana 20 Bobiako. Yeah. And ask if all of us behave like that. What will happen? I am the model. I am the model. That's the standard. Every time I think so personally, I think so. I think I'm the model how I handle my wife. And I ask myself, if everybody handles Pastor Shalate the way I handle Pastor Shalate, will it be a happy world? I think, I think, what do you think? Good world. It will be a good world. I hope you're not encouraging me. <laughs> it will be a good world. I want to think, the way I handle the pastors, if that's just the way everybody handles them, yeah, the way I handle the members of the church, the way I handle sisters in church, if every pastor handles sisters like that, what kind of church are we going to have? That's why I ask myself all the time. Yeah. The way I handle my sons and daughters in the ministry. Wow. If everybody behave like that. The way I handle my parents, my spiritual parents. If everybody handles their spiritual parents like that. Oh, I think the church will be stable if everybody honors their spiritual parents the way I honor my spiritual parents. I think the earth will be a stable earth and a special world. If everybody honors the way I honor my biological parents. I'm not trying to say that because I've, I've, I've arrived. I'm still working on myself. But if everybody honors my, my parents, their parents the way I honor mine, oh, it's going to be good. It will be beautiful. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? If everybody is a giver the way I give, I think the church will prosper better. If everybody is fighting to be faithful the way I'm faithful, I think, I think we'll end up somewhere. I think we'll end up somewhere. Tell somebody you're the model. We are looking at your life. Yeah. If everyone dresses the way you dress, are we going to have more brothers fall? Somebody say, Masse. Amen. Wow. You know, somebody was saying that we should not blame David because of Bathsheba. That we should blame Uriah for not putting a roof over his, his bathroom. That Uriah is the one to blame. That he didn't put a roof over his bathroom. <laughs> that, that's a real sinner. No. Tell somebody you are, the, you are the light, you are the light, you are the light, you are the light, you are the light. Then we go to the last one and it says we are the salt of the earth. This is now where it gets more interesting. Mm, this one gets more interesting. We are what? The salt. Somebody say, I am the salt. Now, the Bible does not say you are a salt. It is you are the salt. We are the only available salt on the earth. The, only, the church is powerful blessing. The church is power. Believers are powerful. They mean a lot to God. I, I wish we can know. And just leave our Christian demands. That's all. Heaven is banking on us too much. We are the salt of the earth. Now, I'll give you two functions of the salt. I'll keep it simple. Number one is to flavor that which lacks flavor. Job chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. Job 6, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says what? Can flavorless food be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an, of an egg? Have you ever tried to eat, by the way, the white of an egg? Yeah? It's, it's without salt. It's very tasteless. It's very weird. Continue reading. My soul refuses to touch them. They are as loathsome food to me. They are as loathsome food to me. Hear me. We are the salt of the earth. The same way if you don't put salt in food, that food is tasteless. This earth is tasteless without believers. It is loathsome. That's why sometimes God will struggle to at least save one person in every family. So that that family has a piece of salt. So that at least it tastes good to his mouth. A little bit good. 
Can I hear somebody say amen? <laughs> yeah, this earth is loathsome without believers. Apart from our presence on earth, there is no other reason why God should deal with this earth in grace and mercy. We are the only thing that makes the earth acceptable to God. We are the only people that makes the earth palatable. We are the only thing that causes God to withhold wrath and judgment upon the earth. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Isaiah 65 and verse 8. Isaiah 65 and verse 8. Look at it. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says, Do not destroy it, for a blessing is in it. We are the reason why the earth is not being destroyed. Because a blessing, a salt is in it. Mm. We are the only reason why God is looking at this earth with some form of mercy. Because there are believers in it. We make the earth palatable to the mouth of Jesus Christ. To the mouth of God. Somebody say amen. amen. So as long as we are on this earth, our responsibility is, is to live our life in a way we commend this earth to God. Hmm. We are supposed to live in a way that we constantly give God a reason as to why he should constantly show grace and mercy to this earth other than deal with it with wrath and judgment. And I gave you the story during the man of war of, of, of Abraham interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. You know the story? He said, if I find 50 righteous people, are you going to destroy? God said, no, I won't. 45, 30, 20, 10. He said, if I get 10 pieces of salt, I will not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you know if we had believers in Sodom, Sodom would not have been destroyed, no matter how evil it was? Some of you don't know you're the reason why your, your family cannot be destroyed, because you're a piece of salt. We commend the earth to God. We make the earth paratable to God. We make our nation paratable to God. I'll tell you why I'm preaching the gospel of salvation. The other day, this week, I got another reason. I have so many reasons, but I got another one. It's to multiply righteous men, to multiply salt, so that there is preservation. To multiply salt. I want salt everywhere in every county. So that there is no judgment in any county of this country. The man of God, the senior evangelist, one of the great evangelists in our nation, I had a meeting with him. And he told me, son, the Lord spoke to me and he said, as long as you are doing evangelism in this country, him. The Lord spoke to him. He said, as long as I'm doing evangelism in this country, judgment cannot hit. He said, that every country where there is an evangelist or evangelism is being done, the judgment cannot hit. And you know why judgment cannot hit? Because when God sits in heaven, ah, come on somebody, he is hopeful. Yeah. That at least somebody is preaching, these people have a chance to change their mind. My God. And yesterday, Pastor Samson told me something I'll never forget. He told me, when you come before God in worship, you give him your heart. When you do soul winning, you give him many hearts. My God, my God, my God. <laughs> so soul winning is a senior form of worship. Because many hearts are better than one heart. <laughs> yeah. Then I said, instead of every time coming before God, oh God, I love you, oh God, I, I want to multiply many people telling God, oh God, I love you. I want to give him many hearts. I'll never forget that statement. Son, that's powerful. Can I hear somebody say Hallelujah. We are the salt of the earth. We make the earth paratable to God. Am I communicating? Can I tell you why? This city of life, even if, even if the devil multiplies himself a billion times, he can't stop it because this church is committed to soul winning. It's our secret card. It's our secret card. And this, this project is connected to missionary work. Let me tell you what will happen. We are going to be having missionaries from all over the nations. When we go to Rwanda, we'll have some Rwandanese who are willing to be trained to be missionaries come to this school. We train them, we release them to go back to Rwanda and plant churches. The nations are connected to the city of life. The devil cannot do anything about it. 
Can I hear somebody say amen? He may raise some agents of the devil, even send them to the church. But soon, if they don't change their mind, as we go up, they'll go under. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. So being used to the devil against this, the city of life is a waste of time. Somebody say hallelujah. Okay. There's one thing the Lord told me I want to tell you. Can I tell you? He told me equally, if you have a cup of tea and you put several pieces of salt, just particles of salt, like 10. Do you know that tea cannot be drunk? The other day I went to, I was, I was with somebody, we went for coffee to meet and talk. And I, you know those sachets? I didn't know it is salt. <laughs> and me, I have a sweet tooth. I have a sweet tooth. Hallelujah. So, ni kura ruga tuna kweka shwa. Ra, ra. Alafu ni kachukua. Alafu ni kakoroga kabisa. Kachukua. <laughs> it was terrible. But even if you put just 10 particles of salt, that tea is not drinkable. Then he told me, if I have a few particles of believers everywhere, that system, that, that place, it is not drink and go by the devil. The devil cannot drink it. The devil cannot swallow it. The devil cannot swallow it. Yeah. If I only have a few people born again everywhere, there are particles of salt. The devil cannot swallow. <laughs> That's why you may not know you're the reason why your family is getting preserved. You're a particle of soil, of, 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 of salt. Generational curses cannot swallow your family because you're a particle of salt. Mm. Number two, salt preserves. Before fridge came, okay, and even today we do that, by the way, especially for fish, isn't it? They used to whatever with salt because salt will push away forces of, of corruption. That's right. Yeah. Forces of corruption. So, God says as a believer, the reason why I called you as a believer is so that you can be salt. So that everywhere I place you, you can push away forces of corruption. Let me explain. Manager. I'll tell you why you are a manager. You're not a manager because necessarily of many things you think. You are there as a particle of salt. So that when all the other sectors, they are corrupt. Your sector is pushing corruption away. You're a particle of salt. <laughs> pushing away forces of corruption. I'll tell you why you're in that, in that company. Here. Yeah. That's why some of us are placed where we are placed. I'm sure the reason why I'm not in Washington, D.C. I'm a Massachusetts. And I think it's not a, you can train me to twang. If I went there, I can change my language. But God will not take me there. You know why he took me to Islands? He wanted a particle of salt. Can I tell you what will happen shortly? People will be boarding planes to come to see what is happening in Islands. <laughs> They'll travel from nations of the world because a particle of salt is pushing the agenda of corruption. Pushing hard. Pushing hard the agenda of corruption. Pushing hard. You wonder why God put you in that Kenya Airways? Put you in that AR, put in that in Safari Com, put you that in whatever. There's a lot of corruption there. Why he put you in that bank? No, the money is not the main thing, please. You are the salt. That's why if you become corrupt like them, you break the heart of God. Because now, the salt has become like what he was looking for. Let me say this. Let me have prison worship come, come, come from, come. Let me demonstrate with you. Come. Form a group. 
from a group. That is company A. Okay? Let's have company B. Company B, come. The video of you, company B. Let me see how, let me tell you how people, sometimes they pray for jobs and God does not give them jobs. Let me see, let me show you how you secure yourself vacancies from the realm of the spirit. Can I show you? How many people want me to show you? Can I show you? <laughs> then you are, who is Pastor Samson? Come. You are there, you are praying for a job. Let me first of all say this. When you are eating food, do you put salt in one place? You know, I had one of my cousins. <laughs> the way he used to eat ugari. Yanakura ugari yote inaisha. Araba nanza kukura boga. For real. For real. Yeah. So maybe I thought that I, 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 I'm thinking maybe I should have given him an idea. Weka chumvi kado. Weka kab, weka, weka, weka kitungu kado. Weka kila kitu kado. Mafuta kado. Ukulake boja boja tu. That's how I used to eat ugari. Do we eat salt first and then we eat food? Do we put it in one place? What do we do? We spread. And even sometimes when you taste, you can tell one area is flat, the other area is too much. Ah, uh, come on, talk back to me. I want to teach you some truth here. Yeah, I want to show you how your father operates. Too much salt here, little salt here. Too much here, so what you do, you koroga, isn't it? You stir to ensure the particles of salt have gone to every corner of the food. Am I communicating? That is why God has distributed us everywhere. Some of us are in the entertainment. Come on, help me. Some of us are police. Some of us are in politics. Some of us are in business. Some of us are in church. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. He has distributed us everywhere so that we can flavor those places. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes God will show a place. This place is so flat. When I taste it, everybody is corrupt. When I taste it, everybody is immoral. I'm sorry. <laughs> when I taste it, everybody is... I do what? <laughs> that one. So when God tastes, he says, if, if nothing is done here, this company will come under my judgment. Because sometimes wickedness can be too much until God reacts. Yeah? When your cup of wickedness is too much, sometimes God reacts and you can kill. So God says, so that somebody can give me a reason. I, I looked for a man to stand in the gap. Or at least for somebody to give me a reason to still not destroy these people. This person is looking for a job. But he's looking for a job here. But here, all of them are believers. Too much salt. I'll send him here. I'm explaining why some of you are working in some of the prisons where everybody is corrupt. And you want to resign. Why do you want to resign? God put you there on purpose. It was too bad. And God had to place a piece of salt. At least he can begin to push. To push every fornication away. All of a sudden, he begins to befriend him. And all of a sudden, he begins to talk to him. You are stressed. If you are wicked, you'll be stressed. That's the truth. <laughs> you are wicked, you're not born again. Stress will come to you. You like it or not. Eventually, he invite him to church. Come on, somebody. Eventually, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Guess what? Because of this one piece of salt, now we have two pieces of salt. <sighs> The main agenda is soul winning. I'm telling you, the main agenda is soul winning. The main agenda is soul winning. And all of a sudden, because they were connected to the wife who used to drink a lot. Hey, whiskey. <laughs> so he begins to preach to the wife. Now we have the three people. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. The boss. We used to sleep with. Uh, 
I'm sorry. Blessing. It's acting. We are acting, please. I'm sorry. <sighs> we used to sleep with girls for promotions. <sighs> it was just acting. All of a sudden, he has nobody to sleep with because everybody begins and, and, and he begins a fellowship. He begins a fellowship. He begins a fellowship in the company. That one hour we just pray in the company. All of a sudden, the salt is taking effect. It's taking effect. It's taking effect. It's taking effect. And sometimes you wonder why after that you lost the job. Can I tell you why? Because all of a sudden now it was too much salt. God said, let me pluck you from there. Because you don't work for you. You're a man on a mission. So they sacked you. It is not because they sacked you. God is deploying you somewhere for a mission. For a mission. For a mission. Hey! hey! You're wondering, Lord, oh, and the way I did fellowship, and the way I pray, and now I've lost my job. Stop complaining. You don't live for yourself. I am crucified with Christ. I no longer live. It is Christ who deploys me where he wants me to be. Without even complaining, without even whatever, just thank God. Within no time, without even applying, you are deployed to another company. You discover also their wickedness. You talk of missionary workers. It's a missionary worker. God is giving you a job as a missionary. I say God is giving you a job as a missionary. God is giving you a job as a missionary. That's why you see with that. And sometimes you are there. You're working. But God sees you in. Yeah. Men of God, allow me to just use you to demonstrate. I honor the oil. Yeah. Yeah. Where does this sit down? Who else? Come here, Jackie. Come here, Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. Allow me to just use you. So, you end. gap. Am I communicating? You think God wants to send you there to make money? Money is a consequence. He's sending you a salt. He has seen the corruption there. That's how if you become a genuine believer, I promise you, you will never lack a job. You will never lack a mission. 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 Then he says there's a gap there. All of a sudden, you're very comfortable here. And you feel very uncomfortable. You feel your heart is churning. I'm not okay here. And you begin to pray. You go to seven gates to pray. Ah, yeah. And the Lord tells you, your time there is over. If they don't sack you, God will tell you, okay, now you need to apply to UN. You think your desire to apply to UN is because they, you earn a lot of money. God has seen the corruption in UN. God has seen the corruption in UN. And then he says, if you don't think like that, you think you are going there for money. And you are going to fail God when you get there. You have seen the corruption there. All of a sudden you apply. And without knowing anybody, no Godfather, nobody, you get a job in the UN. You're making more money and you're winning more souls. Am I communicating? But let me tell you something. Can I tell you something? Ah, yeah. You see this company, the corrupt one? See the corrupt Kabisa? This company. Uko up, uko jobless. Come, come, come this day. Watch out, we are back at the cat here now. Umba, peke yake. I'm a, I'm a job here. We must have a job. Oba, 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 oba. Come here, sir. Ria, ria, well, ria, well, ria, well, ria. He's free for a job. See the quality. See. God comes and he comes he says I hear your prayer and I know you want to go to that company and I want to answer the prayer but that company is so corrupt you, want, you don't want to go there isn't it that company is very corrupt 
And the corruption I see there is the certain corruption you have. So I'm not looking for corruption. I'm looking for salt. I'm looking for salt. I'm looking for salt. So me, I can't send you there because if I send you there, you multiply immorality because immorality is in you. Then you see somebody else who doesn't pray as you pray has gotten the job. Because God was not looking for a worker. It is a company looking for a worker. God is looking for salt. <laughs> God is looking for salt. <laughs> God is looking for salt. And the last company he gave you, the things you did. So he says, let me keep you jobless for some time. Then align your character. Make you salt. The day you become salt, I destroy corruption in you. Then you are ready for my mission. I'll take you to any company, including Germany, China, whatever you want, I'll take you there. Because I'm a God of missions. God is a missionary. He's a missionary. He said, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, not to become a doctor, not to become a lawyer, to become a missionary. Yeah, God is to missionary, it's a missionary enterprise God. This young man that is speaking to you, I've never looked for a job. Even where I've worked, they don't have my papers. Including East African breweries. They don't have my papers. Yeah. I go on my knees. <laughs> yeah. Where I'm commanded to go, I go. And I go. But I'll tell you, everywhere I've gone, there are traces of souls. East African breweries, I want souls. Yes, I did. I want souls. I used to just start a conversation. I say, how are you? By the way, do you go to church? It will start there. But he, by the way, you know, have you considered, by the way, salvation? Say, so you know that, you know, they, they respect Daktari. Oh, Daktari, I've never, why? Can you give me two minutes of your time? Before we are done, the person will give their life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> a man on a mission. Hear me? If you become the sword, since there are too many corruption everywhere, then there are too many opportunities for you. Just become the salt. You'll never have to look for a job. Just become the salt. Ensure that there's no corruption that can corrupt you. Amen. Then God will send you to push the corruption away. Oh, yeah. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. So I am, God bless you so much. Clap your hands for them. I'm done. <laughs> I am the salt of the earth. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm the salt. I'm there to push corruption. I'm there to make the earth paratable. I'm not there to be like them. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not here to be like pastors, other pastors, corrupt pastors. I'm a piece of salt. I'm here to sanitize the system. I'm here to push corruption away. <laughs> I know my mandate is clear. I won't do what anybody else is doing. It's clear. It's clear. Christ or clear. That's why they're anointing. The oil will continue being on my hand. And the grace of God will continue to operate. Tell somebody you're on a mission. The last time you entered there and you began to be corrupt like them, you broke the heart of God. God cried. God cried. He said, the only sword I've lost. So I have to go back again and mine and raise. And sometimes to raise somebody is very hard. So I say, I have to go and begin afresh. The last time, the last time you went there and you be, began to behave like them, the heart of God was so broken. Because they say, my only missionary I've lost. We are not normal people. We are people on a mission. Shake somebody one more time. Tell them you are the salt of the earth. Oh, okay. Read. It's powerful. They are preaching with me. <laughs> read. Let me tell you why you are here. Tell somebody. Let me tell you why. Tell somebody. Let me tell you why. Let me tell let you me why. Let me tell you why you are here. Let me tell you why. This is powerful. Read. You are here to be salt seasoning that e brings out the God flavors of this. E I had not seen it. Aha. If you lose your saltiness, hey! how will people taste godliness? 
you've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. <laughs> now, go back to New King James Version, then this is what we're going to conclude with. <laughs> Let's read this one. Let's read this one. Want to go? You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. But if the Pastor, Pastor Samson, come. So you are the salt of the earth. You see, the moment you became the salt, I'll take you anywhere. You want to end? I'll take you. It's nothing. You end is nothing. Working in state house is nothing. Oh, we, I wish you can understand. <laughs> Visa. Oh. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. What are, we, what are we crying about? I can't understand. <laughs> money. <laughs> money. Getting money. Let's be serious. You're the salt of the earth. If, 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 if I know you serve the two purposes to put flavor, to be the reason why I don't destroy the earth, number two, to push corruption, anywhere I see need. And let me tell you that from the topmost offices, there are gaps. So God can take you anywhere. And he can even take you there shortly. Then deploy somewhere else. That's why you see some people are here, then here, then here, then here. And others, they are here, then they come and there is a gap. Because sometimes they failed God. God says, let me pull you back and prepare you. Because I can see you're not ready to be deployed. So God is not destroying you, he's preparing you. If you can come, if you can flow with him faster and, and prove to him you are ready, you'll be surprised. Doors will begin to open up for you. So you're the salt of the earth. But the Bible says what? But if the salt loses its flavor. But if you come to a place where if I send you somewhere, you become part of the corruption. So you can't make me look at it favorably. In fact, you, you increase my anger. You increase my wrath. So that means you've lost your flavor. Continue. How shall it or, be seasoned? number two, number two, corruption does not whatever. Any, you've lost, you cannot serve that purpose of me. You just want money. Give me a bigger job. Father, don't you know I even pledge for the city of life? What's wrong with you? Don't you love your house? And you know I'm serious. God says, I, I am also serious. But I have a bigger mission for your life than little peanuts of money. Life does not, it's not measure based on the money. Yeah, I mean to mission work. So he said, aha, since you have lost that, you've lost your flavor. So from now, the Bible says, it is it good is for nothing. You have lost your flavor. How can it be seasoned? It is good for nothing. According to God, when you can't play those two roles, even if you are earning money, according to God, you're good for nothing. Now, good for nothing is the worst insult anybody can tell you in this world good for nothing. Because even if, if somebody calls you dog, dog is a security officer. <laughs> if he calls you cow, cow and milk, we are good, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, call anybody any animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call me cheetah. Look at how Watali wana toka, kutoka Americani, kuja kuona cheetah. Call anybody any animal. You have called them something useful. But good for nothing? <laughs> good for nothing from the mouth of Elohim. He says, if you can't flavor the world, whether you become rich or not, according to my mathematics, you're good for nothing. The only interest he has with you is your mission work of being the salt of the earth. Don't make money your target. You're losing it. You lose God in the process. You'll be rich and empty and with God you will score zero. But make the mission of God your priority. You'll have more money than you can handle. <laughs> you'll actually be getting five job opportunities. You don't know which to choose. And you'll be asking God, Father, I am the salt. Where are you deploying me? <laughs> it's, not, not, it's not who is paying me more money. It's where are you deploying me? Because I'm a man on a mission. Can I hear somebody say Amen. amen. I see pastor say, I would like to be sent in America. I don't want to be sent anywhere. I want to be sent where God wants to deploy me as the sword. I'm a missionary. Send me. He sent me to the village. Oh, please. Don't I love that mission? Because he sent me as a sword there. Yeah. Can I hear somebody say amen? 
I'm a village pastor, very happy. So he says, you are good for nothing. So what is your lot? It is to be stepped. That is why believers have lost honor in the world. The Bible says, thrown down and trampled underfoot, not, not by demons, by men. That's a curse we've been given for not playing our role. Men will mishandle us. That's a curse that has been released. Men will mishandle you, sack you left, right, center, use you and dump you. It's a, everything against you, the Bible says when you break the book of the law, you enter into curses. That is, that is uh, Deuteronomy 28. Yeah. So we have so many believers who are good for nothing, but they're pursuing money. And they're forever in prayer and in cashers. But to God, you're good for nothing. You want me to give you a job? For what? For what? I know what you can do when you get there. I know what you can do. If you are given an offer of two million, two million, you cannot resist. I know you. Yeah. And I know there, there are so many deals. So I'm not going to take you there. We have in, let, let the people who are corrupt go. For you, let me hold you back and clean you for some time. And God's cleaning can be dangerous. It can be painful. Anybody who know what I'm talking about? Oh, God's cleaning can be painful. The process of God can be, especially when God sees there's a seed of him in you. He will tell you, I'll hold you here for some time. You might even be housed by somebody for some time who's mistreating you. But it's because God is working on you. Let me tell you, let him eye on you. Cooperate with him first. You'll never have to look for a job in your life. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? But give me a message and then we go home. Let's read all of us together. Let me tell you why you are here. You are here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. Woo! You are here to season the earth, to season the company. That's why God has sent all of us, everybody. I mean, we have policemen here. We have politicians here. Oh, we have pilots here. God is sending everybody everywhere. You want a piece of salt even in the pilot. You want a pilot who is a salt. Yeah, you want a piece of salt everywhere. Everywhere. Music industry. He's sending salts there. Hallelujah. Yeah, Uber. Uber. He's sending salts there. Yeah, so that you can be telling people as they come to you or whatever, you preach to them, kidogo, kidogo. And you play some nice music. And sometimes as you're waiting for customers, you're praying, they are shande, de bege, de bege. When they enter this conviction, huh, he wants salt in the umba industry. Salt, salt, salt in the umba industry. He wants salt in the catering. He wants salt to our waiters, waiters who are salt. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He's looking for, he's looking for saloonies to are salt. As you're plating somebody here, you ask them, do you go to church? Can I invite you to my church? Can I give you a flyer? Oh, God is saying, I want, if you are like that, I'll give you the biggest salon in Nairobi. I'll give it to you so that you can have more customers and the salt can flavor the world. Oh, God is a missionary God. He's a missionary God. Can I hear somebody say amen? If you lose your saltness, how will people taste godliness? Since they can't taste godliness, you've lost your usefulness and will end up in garbage. So we may have to compromise to get jobs like everybody else because we don't have any salt. So we have to connive like everybody else. It was never meant to be so. Yes, you're supposed to just have a conversation with God. God, where do you want me to work? Work next time. What is the plan you have for my life? He says, there's a place I see a lot of corruption. I want to send you there. Whew. And then we just go there. Can I hear somebody say Hallelujah. This young man entered the restaurant time ago. I'm arrested, Pastor. It's getting worse with the age. My rest is increasing. <laughs> Rested. I just discovered my mission. I'm assault. It's where God deploys me. And I'm here to flavor the world. I'm a man in the hands of Elohim. You do with me as you will. The opinions of men lost this long time. What do you want with my life? Where next? Oh, Busia. All right. After that, Bugoma. All right. Yes, sir. The day he say, we are done with Kenya, go out in the country, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. Because it is where he sees corruption, he sends me. He sends me, God, you're my sword. And I want to become such a strong sword so I can become more useful. So I want my purity to increase. 
my love for God to increase, my, my detest for evil to increase, my passion to obey to increase, become a stronger sword. So I can be, you can even deploy me somewhere shortly and then tell me you're done. Leave. I'm a man in the hands of a God who wants to sanitize the world. That is the call of a believer. Clap your hands. God bless you. 